This is an example of a redox problem that is meant to be tackled after you've watched the first lecture video for chapter 20. That lecture video goes through the uh, delineated steps for balancing a redox equation, and I'd like to make sure that you've gone through that first and taken notes before you try to tackle this problem. But this is going to be a worked through example, uh, starting with an unbalanced redox equation, going all the way through balancing it in acid, and then determining whether or not the reaction is spontaneous as written, okay? <clears throat> so what we're gonna be doing first is we are going to be asked to balance the redox equation in acid, okay? And if you've watched that video, you know that Balancing in base is almost entirely the same, except it's got a couple of extra steps at the very end, okay? So our redox equation looks like this. We have chromium three plus, plus I two, gives us chromate ion, Cr two O seven, two minus, plus I minus. Okay, so our first step is to balance this redox equation. Step one in that process is assign oxidation states to everything in the problem. So we have a plus three for the chromium. We have a zero for the iodine because that's its natural state. We have a plus six <clears throat> for the chromium in this uh, chromate ion. Each oxygen is a minus two <clears throat> and iodine is a minus one. Okay, so we see that uh, chromium is going from a plus 3 to a plus 6, and we see that iodine is going from a 0 to a minus 1. Okay, there, those are our half reactions. Okay, and when we pull those half reactions down, we want to pull that entire molecule down, not just the Cr2. Okay, so our half reactions are going to look like this. So we have chromium 3 plus. I'm just going to pull these straight down so you can see this visually, that I'm just pulling these things straight out of the equation. Two minus. And then our other half reaction is the I2 going to I minus. Okay. So these are the half reactions. Okay. Sorry about that little glitch there. I accidentally hit the button. <clears throat> okay, so our I'm going to keep my oxidation numbers in the in the problem just for sort of uh, assistance so that I can see things easily. Okay, just a little helper um, for our subsequent steps. Okay, so what I want to do at this stage is I can come up here. Uh, I want to balance non-oxygen and hydrogen first, non-O and H first. Okay, so I'm going to make this a, I'm going to change colors yet again. I'm going to probably be swapping colors quite a bit at this stage. Actually, let's stay in the red and then we'll put the uh, coefficients in green. CR two O seven two minus plus three plus six. So I've got two chromiums on the right, one chromium on the left. So I'm going to balance that. And my other half reaction is I have I two going to I minus. So I'm going to balance my iodines in that way. to a minus one. So now I need to add electrons. To the more positive side, or in other words, the side that has the more positive oxidation state, All right? So I've got um, two Cr3, Cr2, O7, 
plus 7, 2 minus, plus 3, and plus 6. Okay, now, this is where you want to pay attention to how many chromiums are being changed, okay? Oh, excuse me, why am I doing CR3? <laughs> That should be plus three. Okay, I was confused there for a second. I'm like, wait a minute, these aren't isn't working out. Okay, but uh, so each chromium is going from a three plus to a six plus. Okay, so each chromium is losing six electrons, or excuse me, three electrons. But I've got two chromiums on each side that are both gaining, or excuse me, losing three electrons. So I've got a total of six. Each chromium <clears throat> loses three electrons. Okay, so I've got two chromiums on each side, so I've got a total transfer of six electrons. I'm going to put them on the more positive side, the side that has the more positive oxidation state. Okay, so let's look at the iodine half reaction and do the same thing. So I've got I2, yeah. keep this in red for visibility, so I2 going to 2I minus, and that's a 0 and a minus 1. So each iodine is gaining an electron, gaining one electron, so I've got a total transfer of two electrons in this process. I'm going to put them on the more positive side, which is the side with the 0. So I've got a two electron transfer here, okay? Remember, each atom gains an electron. Okay, so that's a tricky thing. Sometimes you have to pay attention to those stoichiometric coefficients, okay? So now, just to, to point out, you do not have to, when you balance these equations, you do not have to do all of these individual steps separately, rewriting them each time the way I am. I'm doing that for um, clarity so things don't get cluttered and you can watch each step develop, okay? So here we are with these two half reactions. We've added electrons in, so now we want to balance the oxygens and hydrogens. So balance oxygen and hydrogen by adding H2O to balance the oxygens and adding H plus to balance the hydrogens. Okay, so I've got now at this stage I've got two Cr3 plus and I'm not going to worry about the oxidation number this time at this stage because I've already taken care of the electrons in this scenario. So I no longer need to carry that down. You don't really have to. It's just helpful to when you get to the step with the electrons. Uh, let's see. I'll give myself a little bit of room here. So Cr3 plus, and we've got to the chromate, O7, Cr2, O7, 2 minus, plus 6 electrons. Okay, so I've got 7 oxygens on the right. So I need to add seven waters to the left. Okay, so that balances the oxygens specifically. And then I need to balance hydrogens by putting H plus on the other side. So right now on the left side, I've got 14 hydrogens in that seven H2O. So I'm gonna add 14 H plus to the right. And then our iodine equation our iodine half reaction has no oxygens or hydrogens so I don't have to add anything there sometimes you have to add some to both side to both half uh, reactions okay so now our next step is to balance the electrons So they cancel. OK, 
okay? So in order to do that, I may need to multiply one equation or the other or both in order to get the same number of electrons in both equations, okay? So we're going to say 2Cr3 plus plus 7H2O Cr2, O7, 2 minus, plus 6 electrons, and 14 protons. And then in my next equation, I have 2 electrons plus I minus, or excuse me, I2 gives us 2 I minus. So I've got 6 electrons in my top equation, 2 electrons in my bottom. I need the same in both. So I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 3. Okay, so I'm going to just right below it um, write that out. So I'll have 6 electrons plus 3 I2s and 6 I minuses. So I'm just going to cross that out. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and cancel, uh, use another color, cancel my electrons. So six electrons are canceled by six electrons. All right? And just to make this easier to look at, I'm just going to take this out entirely. Okay? So now our final step here is to um, combine. Combine equations, All right? Anything that's the same on the same side, I add together. Anything that's the same on opposite sides, I subtract. In this case, my iodine half equation has no oxygens or hydrogens or waters or anything, so there's nothing for me to really mess with, okay? So at this stage, I'm just going to combine those equations, and our result will be... So there is our balanced redox equation. And if you go through this carefully, the entire thing should balance perfectly. Two chromiums, two chromiums, 14 hydrogens, 14 hydrogens, seven oxygens, seven oxygens, and so forth. Okay? So there's part one of this worked example. So now the next part of this that we want to go through is... Is it spontaneous as written? Spontaneous as written. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, um, in order to do that, I need to know um, E cell. So we're going to find find E zero cell for this reaction. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so first thing I want to do is assign oxidation numbers. So if I'm starting at this stage where I have a balanced equation, I can just begin by assigning oxidation numbers. Now we've already done that, but for the sake of, of if we were starting right here, this is how we would tackle this. So zero, Hydrogens are plus ones, oxygens are minus twos. Chromium here is a plus six. Oxygen still minus two, plus one, and minus one. Okay, so we looking in here, we see that for chromium, it's going from a plus three to a plus six. So that means that it's oxidized which makes it the anode, okay? Remember that anode and oxidation both begin with vowels, so they go together, okay? And then the iodine 
we see that it goes from a zero to a minus one, which means that it's reduced, and it's the cathode. Okay, you can remember that reduced and cathode both begin with consonants, or you can remember uh, red cat uh, in order to keep those together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do some little uh, magic and paste in a table of reduction potentials. Okay, so in one reaction, I have um, I have chromium or a chromate Cr three plus to chromate. Okay. So I'm going to look in that table and I'm going to find the reaction that contains, let's zoom in here, that contains Cr3 plus, and there it is, and chromate. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to find the reduction potential for that reaction, and it's plus 1.33 volts. Okay, so my anode. my E0 reduction is plus 1.33 volts, okay? Recognize the fact that we are looking for the reduction potential for that change, okay? Realizing that chromium is being oxidized and we're looking at a reduction equation, doesn't matter. Find the change from between chromium three plus and chromate and pull just that value. Don't change anything, don't alter the signs. Just find the number for that half reaction, okay? Don't reverse it, don't do anything to it, just pull it, okay? And then we're gonna look in here and find our um, I2 to I minus. And look, there's, there's our I2 and our I minus, okay? And our reduction potential for that is right there, 0.54, plus 0.54. Okay, so for the, the iodine, the cathode reduction potential is plus 0 0.54 volts. Okay, so E0 cell, is simply cathode minus anode. Okay, and these are the reduction potentials. Okay, so in our case, E0 cell is 0 0.54 volts minus 1.33 volts gives us a E0 of minus 0.79 volts, okay? <clears throat> so when E0 is negative, E0 cell is less than zero, non-spontaneous. As written. And we keep saying that in these scenarios because the reverse will be spontaneous. Okay, so if I take that reaction and I write it in the opposite direction, going from chromate ion to chromium ion, that reaction will be spontaneous. It will have a plus 0.79 volts. Okay. So I hope that this little tutorial on balancing and determining E-cell is helpful. Um, if it was confusing and you didn't watch